In this week's lab, we're going to be using the ideal gas law to determine the concentration or the amount of a particular substance in a mixture. You need to keep in mind your ultimate question here because our lab is going to be focusing on the gases, but the question is really about the reactants in this process. We want to know what percent of your mixture is potassium chlorate. Potassium chlorate is mixed in with potassium chloride, and both of these are white and both are soluble. So it's not easy to separate these either visually or by some physical process. So what we're going to have to do is do a chemical reaction. We're going to change the potassium chlorate into potassium chloride and oxygen and measure the oxygen. We need to ultimately know the mass of the potassium chlorate and the mass of the mixture. The mass of the mixture is easy to find as we'll just weigh it on the balance. But finding the mass of just the potassium chlorate is difficult without knowing how much of that substance is reacting. So this is what we're going to do. We're going to find the mass of the potassium chlorate from the moles of potassium chlorate times its molar mass. You know how to find molar mass by looking up the elements on the periodic table. In order to find the moles, we're going to have to do some stoichiometry. So this lab is combining the ideal gas law with stoichiometry from earlier chapters. We're going to use this chemical equation. Potassium chlorate is going to react with heat, that's what this triangle means, and a little catalyst, manganese oxide, to form potassium chloride and oxygen. Now these two will remain in the test tube because they're both solids, but the oxygen gas will leave the system. We're going to use tubes to capture it and to displace water in order to determine the amount of oxygen that we're going to form. Now keep in mind the original tube also has in it some potassium chloride to begin with. So we have our original potassium chloride plus the potassium chlorate that we're trying to find. We do the reaction and then in the test tube we have potassium chloride that comes from the reaction and potassium chloride that was already there. So this potassium chloride didn't go anywhere and we can't simply just weigh the mass of the products to know the total mass that reacted because there's already original potassium chloride in there. All right, so we're going to be using the ideal gas law. Um, you've seen this before. Um, remember that the units that we use for the ideal gas law are very important. Pressure will be measured in atmospheres, volume will be measured in liters, and temperature will be measured in Kelvin. However, in the lab, all of those units are different. The pressure that we will get from the barometer is going to be measured in millimeters of mercury or torr. The volume that we get will be measured in milliliters because we'll only have a small volume. And our temperature will be measured in degrees Celsius. So in your notebook, you're going to record these data and then show the conversions from one of these units to the other. Be sure to set up your lab notebook with the appropriate formulas and perhaps a drawing of the setup of the equipment and also any data tables that you will need to record your information. Most of the materials for this lab will be set up for you, but you will need from your drawer two beakers. You will use a 100 milliliter beaker, not a 30 milliliter beaker, as it says in the lab manual, to hold your test tube. And you will use the 400 milliliter beaker to capture the overflow water. You will find at your lab station the mixture with the blue label and manganese oxide, and two tools to scoop them out. Sometimes we use these terms interchangeably, but the scoopula has a curved opening. This is used for larger amounts of substances, and please use it for the unknown. The spatula is flat. Use the spatula for the manganese oxide because you're only going to use a small amount of this. In this way, we will keep from contaminating one substance to the other from one class to the next. To begin, you're going to need to measure the mass of your beaker and test tube on the analytical balance. Make sure that the doors of the analytical balance are closed before you take your mass. Record this weight and then add about one gram of your unknown Record the mass of your test tube, beaker, and the mixture added, and then find the mass of the mixture by subtracting the two. You will need to record the mass of your 400 milliliter beaker on a top loading balance because the, it is too heavy for the analytical balance. Once you have the mass of your unknown, 
you'll need to add a small amount of the manganese oxide to be a catalyst for the reaction. Use the spatula and just put a small scoop in. We don't need to weigh this amount because we're not going to be weighing our mixture after the reaction. Shake the manganese oxide and your unknown mixture so that the catalyst is spread throughout the reactor. Cure the test tube into the clamp at a 45 degree angle. Make sure that the material is resting over the top of the Bunsen burner so that the flame will hit where the mixture and the catalyst are sitting. Fill your Florence flask so that the water reaches the base of the neck. Then add the stopper with the two tubes. The tube that goes all the way to the bottom is for the water to leave the flask and has a pinch clamp attached to it. The other tube is for the gas from your reaction to enter the Florence flask. So this is the gas intake tube. To fill the tubing with water, remove the pinch clamp and place the end of the water, the outlet tube into the beaker. Water flowing, place the end of the tube that connects to the test tube into a pipette bulb and squeeze gently until water flows out of the tubing on the until the water comes out into the beaker. Continue to allow water to fill the 400 milliliter beaker until there is between 75 and 100 milliliters of water in the beaker. It's okay if there's a little bit more because we're going to adjust it. Attach the tubing to the glass tube in the stopper and put the stopper into the test tube for the reaction to begin. Observe the water level in the beaker for a minute or so to make sure that it's not changing. If it's not changing, then your system is airtight and you're ready to move on. If it does change and water continues to transfer from the Florence flask to the beaker, then you will need to check all of the attachments, the tubes and the stoppers to make sure that everything is snug. You'll notice that right now the water levels in the flask and in the beaker are not quite the same. We're going to equalize the pressure inside the system and outside the system by lifting the beaker until the water levels are the same. This part's a little bit tricky. While you're holding the beaker at the same level as the water, you're going to secure the pinch clamp. It may be helpful to use a book or some other object to lift up the beaker while you secure the pinch clamp but do make sure that the tubing does not come out of the water while you do this, or you'll have to start your setup over again. Once the pinch clamp is in place, you can take the tubing out of the beaker, making sure that you're not allowing any more water to leave the tubing or any air to get into the tubing. You can just let it sit on the counter and a drop or two is fine. Empty the water from your beaker and dry your beaker. Place the end of your tubing into the dry beaker and unpinch the pinch clamp. It's okay if a small amount of water leaks back into the beaker, but it shouldn't continue to flow. You can let the pinch clamp just rest on the side of the beaker. Now that the apparatus is set up, you can begin heating your mixture. Pull your Bunsen burner away from the test tube before you light it. Turn the valve so that the nozzle is directly underneath the handle this will have the gas entirely open. Check that the bottom up gas opening is open on the Bunsen burner. You should hear a slight hissing sound. And then strike your flame. If you have a yellow flame, you need to provide more oxygen by turning the top barrel to the left. Your flame should be tall enough to reach the test tube but it shouldn't be a lot higher than the test tube. So if you have a very tall flame, adjust the gas valve at the bottom to make it shorter. Once you put the Bunsen burner underneath the test tube, you should notice that the system will begin working right away. You'll see water start collecting into the beaker, and this is coming from the water that's being pushed out of the Florence flask because of air that is coming from the chemical reaction. We're going to continue with this reaction until no more water enters into the beaker. Once the water level stops rising, turn off the Bunsen burner. 
and allow it to come to the reaction to come to room temperature. You'll notice that again, the water levels are not quite the same. So you're going to need to raise and lower either the beaker or the flask until the water levels are the same and then secure the pinch clamp. Again, it may be helpful to use a book or some other object to keep the flask or beaker at the appropriate height. Remove the tubing from the beaker and then we will reweigh the beaker and record the mass to determine how much water is. The tubing from the flask and the test tube and use a thermometer to record the temperature of the remaining water in the flask. Remember to allow the thermometer to sit to, for 30 to 45 seconds so that the temperature can stop changing and equilibrate with the water. Use the table in your lab manual along with the temperature you just recorded to determine the vapor pressure of the water in the gas that was produced. Small amount of water to rinse the waste material from your test tube into the waste container on top of your sink. 